past couple of weeks, our Know Before You Go series has been exploring the issue of visiting friends and family overseas and the extent to which we really prepare for our trip before we go. We've seen that those travelling back to friends and family, to somewhere they might think of as home, were highly unlikely to make vital pre-trip preparations, such as taking out travel insurance or making the right kind of health precautions, for example, buying malaria tablets or getting vaccinations. In this episode, we look further into the Know Before You Go advice from the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. Now, for those of you who don't know what the Foreign and Commonwealth Office is, or the FCO as it is often called, and what it actually does, well, one of its main roles is to protect the interests of British nationals overseas. It does this through a network of 260 embassies and consular posts throughout the world. These embassies provide on-the-ground support for British nationals away from the UK. For example, they can help if you're the victim of crime or if you need to obtain an emergency passport. The FCO also provides practical pre-trip advice to the ever-increasing number of British nationals who travel overseas. Its website, for example, offers the most up-to-date and country-specific travel advice for those heading abroad, and it's a great site to use to help you plan your trip. But how many people really update themselves on their destination before they go abroad? And have they ever heard of the FCO website and the information it could provide? We went out into our local communities to find out. I go for holidays and that's it. No, no, no. Because I mostly go to my, my, back to my, my country, where I come from. Which you know? country is it? St. Lucia. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Because I have the relative of my family there, Every every week I used to call about three times and I thought what is happening <laughs> day and night. Yeah, so before I go, I have everything in, in mind. Mm. I hardly and have never gone to that website before. So I don't really know what pertains there and I can't really discuss that. And I know what is happening. I call Nigeria every day, so why do I need to search for information where I know what the information is? You can only do a basic update, but everything is really, you have to be on the ground. You've got to get there and really see. I will, of course, I will look at the internet and see what's on, look at the newspapers. Yes, but still, I feel I have to be there. So, when travelling back to visit friends and family, many Africans or African Caribbeans feel that they know their destination. Why would they need to update themselves on it? We went to the FCO and talked to Megman, Minister for Consular Affairs, to ask this very question. When you're going on holiday or you're going to see friends and family uh, in a place that you know well, you probably think, I know this country, I know what the laws are, I know the customs uh, that happen there. But things may have changed. And of course, when you've got political situations, such as we've seen recently in Kenya, in Zimbabwe, things can change very quickly. Have a look at our website, check out the country details, find out the latest so that you know uh, exactly where you're going and what the issues are. Don't get caught out, don't ruin your holiday. And the FCO are all too familiar with the types of problems people face abroad if they fail to take the right kinds of precautions. Their embassies around the world deal with thousands of cases, each year involving British nationals in trouble. We spoke to Steve Jewett Fleet, an official at the FCO, who told us about the common problems you might encounter when travelling to Africa and the Caribbean. Certainly, they're pretty wide-ranging, to be honest. I mean, it can be from fairly trivial things, like needing to get money transferred from home, losing your passport before you're trying to get back, to sometimes quite serious consular cases where people have been hospitalised, they've been arrested, and of course they also deal with a lot of deaths overseas. Obviously, not all problems are completely preventable, but if you are aware of potential trouble spots before you arrive at your destination, you are more likely to stay safe whilst away. And if you've made all the necessary precautions, such as taking out insurance, you'll be better equipped to deal with any given situation. As Minister Megman highlighted to us before, a situation in any country around the world can change very rapidly. So even if you feel you know your destination, it is important to check the latest status before you travel. And where can you do this? The FCO website is the best place to visit for the latest travel advice so we asked them to explain a bit more about how it can help. The Foreign and Commonwealth Office website is there to help travellers to prepare before they go and to research their destination before leaving the UK. 
all you need to do is go to www.fco.gov.uk forward slash travel. We get our information from a range of sources, where those include the British embassies overseas, uh, our intelligence services, as well as members of the public. Our travel advice was updated 3,000 times in 2007 and can be updated several times a day in, during times of crisis. To give you an example, Kenya was updated 37 times in January 2008. In fact, all of our travel advice is updated and reissued at least once a quarter. It provides everything you need to know to prepare for a stress-free trip abroad, such as travel checklist to help you plan for your trip abroad and stay safe whilst you're there, a section on travel health so you're aware of the dangers and how to stay healthy, information on travel insurance. It also contains advice on what to do if something goes wrong. We've recently added a new page specifically for those visiting friends and family abroad. So if you are travelling back home, make sure you visit this page for up-to-date information. Perhaps one of the most useful sections is the travel advice by country. It provides up-to-date travel advice for 219 countries and territories around the world. It contains a travel summary which provides the latest information on the risks of travelling to a particular country. For example, it will tell you if there are any parts of a country you should avoid travelling to or it will alert you to any potential health risks. You will also find specific information about safety and security local laws and customs, entry requirements, health and any general points such as advice on currency. For example, if you were travelling out to Nigeria, the website would tell you about the high risk of kidnapping, armed robbery and armed attacks in some of the Niger Delta states, the rise in violent street crime in previously comparatively safe areas of Lagos and the introduction of the Sharia Penal Code in 12 of the northern states. So, what happens if you do get into trouble abroad? We ask people where they'll turn to. Obviously, uh, I'll, I'll have to turn over to the authorities for help. First of all, I'll just look at whichever authority is there for me to get help from, which one will be the best in my interest to assist me. And then, uh, as you've mentioned, the FCO, I might try and look if the FCO can help me future? Well, I will turn to the local police first and foremost because they're again they're on the ground. They, they know what's, who is the local rogues usually. So I would turn to them before I would have to, if I had a major problem and I couldn't get it resolved, then I would obviously turn to the embassies. As some people indicate, the British consulate is the place to turn to for help and advice. But what can they actually do to help? The important thing to understand about our consular services is that they are there to help people when they get into difficulty, but there is a limit uh, to what we can do. We can obviously uh, provide a replacement emergency passport, but at a cost. We will support and help people who are uh, imprisoned or uh, in hospital, but we cannot pay for people to be flown back to the UK uh, or for any of those circumstances. Basically, the kind of things which your travel insurance covers we will not meet that cost so we're there to offer help advice and support but please make sure you've got travel insurance so that you're covered for all the kind of things where you might incur additional costs It's a really important point. You need to know if you're a dual national what the situation is in relation to the country that you're from and what we, uh, in terms of the British Embassy, would do. Now, normally, we don't help and support people who are dual nationals who are in the country of which they have the other citizenship. It's also, therefore, really important if you're travelling that you check with your travel insurer how that affects your travel insurance. So uh, make sure you know are you a dual national and make sure you know just uh, what support you can get from the country where you have your citizenship uh, and uh, check on your tra travel insurance. But obviously no one wants to get into trouble overseas and ruin their time away. We asked Minister Megman for the key things we should do before we go away to help us have a hassle-free trip. 
Well, the first thing to do is to make sure you've got travel insurance. That's enormously important. So get travel insurance and make sure it's valid for where you're going and for your circumstances. Secondly, check out your medical situation. Make sure that uh, you've got the right uh, medication for going. And if you need uh, vaccinations, malaria tablets, that you've done that and you've done that in plenty of time. Thirdly, know your nationality status. If you're a dual national, this could affect your travel insurance. And it will certainly affect what help and support you might get from our consular services. We also want you to update yourself on the area you're travelling to. Make sure that you've got the latest information so that, uh, that you know if anything's changed since the last time you went there uh, and you're aware of any rules, regulations which might be new. Check fully that all your documentation is correct. Have you got the right information? Uh, have you got copies of that details somewhere so that if you do lose it, you can get replacements easily? And know the import laws. That means when you're coming back, be sure that you're not bringing in any animal-related products um, and ask if you're not sure. And finally, if you can, register on our locate system so that if something goes wrong, we can get you easily or we can reassure your family that you're okay. So, the FCO provides invaluable pre-trip advice and in-destination support for all British nationals travelling abroad. It is well worth making use of their expertise to ensure you stay safe whilst away and make the most of your trip. If you want to learn more about the FCO and make use of its excellent website, go to fco.gov.uk forward slash travel.